In the previous lecture, we discussed LC circuits. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the quantity of energy that is stored within the inductors and capacitors inside electric circuits. So let's begin by supposing that we have an inductor with an inductance inside an electric circuit and we place a fully charged capacitor into our electric circuit as shown. Now as soon as we place our capacitor into our electric circuit, let's call that time zero. Now at time of zero, there's no electric flow inside our circuit because all the charge is stored on our two plates of the capacitor. But at time, as time increases, as time progresses, our charge begins to flow and that creates an electric current. So an electric current will flow through our coils of our inductor. Now, initially, a time of zero seconds, all that energy is stored inside our plates of our capacitor. But as time progresses, as time increases, the charge is discharged from the plate of the capacitor and energy begins to store inside the magnetic field of our inductor. So essentially inside an LC circuit, as we'll see in just a moment, the energy oscillates from being stored inside the capacitor to being stored inside our inductor. Now, generally speaking, inside a capacitor, energy is stored within the electric field produced as a result of our separation of electric charge between the two plates of our capacitor. And likewise, inside our inductor, energy is stored inside the magnetic field produced as a result of the flow of an alternating electric current through the loops of our inductor. So once again, whenever charge is stored on a capacitor or current flows in an inductor, energy is stored within the fields, within those respective fields. So let's begin by defining our equation that gives us the quantity of energy that is stored within the capacitor and then we're going to define the equation that gives us the quantity of energy stored inside our inductor with respect to time. So in a capacitor, energy is stored inside the electric field. Now in our discussion on energy storage in capacitors, we were able to show that the, the electric energy stored inside the capacitor is equal to Q squared divided by 2C, where C is the capacitance and Q is the electric charge stored on our plates of the capacitor. Now electric charge depends on time. So as time increases, the quantity of charge stored on the capacitor will decrease at least initially. Now in the previous lecture on our discussion of LC circuits, we were able to show that Q is equal to the following equation. Q naught cosine of our omega t plus phi, where phi is our phase angle, t is the time, omega is the angular velocity, and Q naught is the quantity of charge stored on the plates of the capacitor at time of zero seconds. Now, if we square this, we get the following equation. So notice what this equation tells us. It tells us that if our phase angle is assumed to be zero at time of zero seconds, we get cosine of zero, which is one. And that implies at time of zero seconds, our quantity of energy stored on the capacitor is equal to Q naught squared divided by 2C. So all the energy is stored within the electric field inside our capacitor. Now let's move on to the inductor. In an inductor, the energy is stored within the magnetic field. In our discussion on energy storage inside inductors, we said that the amount of our energy stored inside our inductor is equal to L multiplied by I squared divided by two, where I is simply our electric current with respect to time and L is our inductance. Now recall, in the same way that we were able to derive derive this equation, we were able to show that I is equal to this equation, and we showed that in the lecture on LC circuits. So let's replace I with this equation. Now, 
Before we actually evaluate this, let's recall that in our lecture on LC circuits, we were able to show that omega is equal to the square root of 1 divided by LC, where L is the inductance, and C is our capacitance, and omega is our angular velocity. Now, if we replace omega with this equation and we actually square this, we get the following result. So the quantity of energy stored inside our inductor with respect to time is equal to Q naught squared times sine squared omega t plus phi divided by 2c. Now the phase angle in both equations is simply depends on our initial conditions. Let's suppose that our phi, the phase angle, is zero. So if the phase angle is zero, then this equation becomes as follows, and this equation becomes as follows. Now, notice the important point. So we saw that at time of zero seconds, if our phase angle is zero, uh, our UC is equal to Q naught squared divided by 2C. Likewise, at time of zero seconds, when the phase angle is zero, sine of zero is zero. And so we see at initial time of zero seconds, because there is no electric current inside our inductor, that means there is no energy stored within our inductor and all the energy is stored within our capacitor. Now, if we take this equations, we can, accept, we can essentially plot them on the xy plane, where the x-axis is the period, it's the time in seconds, and the y-axis is the quantity of energy that is stored within our capacitor or within our inductor. So let's begin by plotting this equation as shown by the following green curve. Notice that the quantity of energy stored on our capacitor capacitor varies sinusoidally. So at a time of zero seconds, our quantity of energy is at a maximum. Now we can also plot the same exact equation on this axis, or actually this equation on this axis, that gives us the quantity of energy stored inside our inductor. We see that's given by this blue curve, and it also varies sinusoidally. So at a time of zero seconds, there's no energy stored within our magnetic field inside the inductor and all that energy is stored within the capacitor. Now as time begins to increase the quantity of energy stored on our capacitor begins to decrease because the charge begins to leave our plates. Likewise because an electric current begins to flow as our charge is leaving, there is a magnetic field produced in the inductor, and so the quantity of energy stored inside our inductor begins to increase. Now, at a time of t divided by 4, where t is our period, we see that our quantity of energy stored on our capacitor goes to zero, and that's because at that point, all the charge has completely discharged and now our electric current is at a maximum and so all that energy is now stored inside our uh, magnetic field of our inductor and this continues sinusoidally as shown by the following uh, two curves. So once again, at time of zero seconds, t divided by two, uh, t, three t divided by two, two t, and so on, we see that our uh, energy stored inside our inductor is zero, and the energy stored inside our capacitor is at a maximum given by this quantity, which comes from this equation. So if we plug in t zero and phi zero, we get this equation. Likewise, at t equals t divided by 4, 3t divided by 4, 
5t divided by 4, we see that the quantity of energy stored on our capacitor goes to zero and the energy stored on our inductor becomes this quantity, which happens to be the same as this. So we see the energy actually oscillates back and forth between these two values. So initially, at time of zero seconds, all that energy is stored on our capacitor and no energy is stored in our inductor. But we see at a time of t divided by 4, all the charge discharges from the capacitor and no more energy is stored within our capacitor and, and all that energy is stored within our inductor. So, we see that energy oscillates back and forth between energy stored in the electric field of the capacitor and energy stored inside the magnetic field of our inductor. And this oscillation of energy is known as electromagnetic oscillation. So we see that to find the energy at any given moment in time inside our electric circuit that contains uh, an inductor and a capacitor that is inside an LC circuit, we simply sum up these two equations. So U is equal to UL plus UC, which is equal to this plus this. Now, if we essentially take out our constants of Q naught squared divided by 2C, we see that we have sine 2 omega t plus cosine 2 omega t, and that is equal to 1. So we get the following result. So we see that the quantity of charge stored inside an LC circuit is always the same exact value. It's a constant given by Q naught squared divided by 2C. So this gives us the total energy that remains inside our LC circuit and it stays constant and that's because energy is always conserved. So this equation comes from the conservation of energy. So, we basically see that when our electric current is at a maximum, our, all that energy is stored inside our inductor and no charge lies on the capacitor, so no energy exists inside our capacitor. But, when our electric current goes to zero, all the charge is stored on our capacitor, and so that means all the energy is stored on our capacitor, and no energy is stored within the magnetic field of our inductor.